the term social welfare organizations comprises of two terms namely social welfare and organizations first we will try to understand these terms and then discuss about programs and services rendered by social welfare organizations objectives on completion of this lesson you would know about the concept of social welfare organization and programs and services rendered by social welfare organizations the concept of social welfare the term social welfare has only recently developed in the context of social problems of modern society the industrial revolution of the 19th and 20th century of brought in poverty sickness suffering and social disorganization the post revolution industrial society had to face many social problems that basic social institution namely family neighborhood church and community could no longer adequately resolve them then it was necessary to organize under private and public initiative social services for the needy since then government has taken an increasingly greater responsibility for the well-being of the poor sick disabled and impaired citizen in addition the progress of social sciences provided new perspectives for investigating the cause of poverty of human deficiency the aim being to cure or to alleviate social problems with this background the concept of social welfare emerged with basically means organized activities to alleviate social problems many authors have tried to establish a concise definition for the concept of social welfare but no universally accepted definition has been coined so far friedlander defines social welfare as a system of laws programs benefits and services which strengthen or assure provision for meeting social needs recognized as basic for the welfare of the population and for the functioning of the social order according to encyclopedia of social work an organized effort to ensure a basic standard of decency in relation to the physical and mental well-being of the citizenry includes considerably more than assuring the necessities to support life is characterized by a large complex of interlocking preventive and protective laws and organizations designed to provide at the least universal access to the mainstream of society the ever present active assistance to individuals and groups to facilitate their attaining and maintaining a respectable lifestyle of all these definitions john turner's discussion of the scope of social welfare most closely parallels the basic concepts first turner includes in the purpose of the social welfare the enhancement of social well-being of the total population which deals with welfare from an institutional perspective but it is only half of the definition the second notion he discusses in actual practice the social welfare has a narrower and more residual orientation takes into account the fact that the residual view is still found in the society improving on this definition billuk r canton deliberates that social welfare can be viewed as a very special type of social institution as an institution concerned with the development of both society and the individual and proposes the following definition for the social welfare is an institution comprising policies and laws that are operationalized by organized activities of voluntary or private and or government or public agencies by which a defined minimum of social services are distributed to individuals families and groups for the purpose of preventing elevating or contributing to the solution of recognized social problems so as to improve the well-being of the individual groups and communities directly the concept of organization an organization is defined as a group of individuals 
united for a specific purpose and held together by recognized or sanctioned models of procedure and behavior. Two things are thus necessary for an organization. It must be a group of individuals and this group being organized for some purpose must be guided by some kind of rules for common action. Some of the potential features of organizations are one, organization is a body of members working together to achieve some objectives. Two, it is man-made and is limited in its aims and scopes. Three, there is a feeling of oneness and belongingness, spirit de corps, among the members. Fourth, the members of the organization help themselves together by framing rules and regulation and it is expected that the members observe these rules and modes of procedure and behavior. Organizations being the members of society in closer relationship, this results in better understanding between the members. Organizations help man to enjoy his social rights and at the same time inspire him to fulfill voluntarily his social obligation. Besides, organization also act as a means of mobilization of public opinion, which is so essential for the smooth running of modern democracies. An individual requires many organizations for fulfillment of his needs. Thereby, his field of contact with other individuals enlarges and consequently, his personality finds more wide horizon to expand. In brief, the fulfillment of needs of individual and the development personality, the preservation and transmission of ideas, the formation of public opinion, the encouragement to individuals in times of failures, the safety and security of individual rights and the incentive to a social development and change are the functions of organizations. The concept of social welfare organization. Now, it is much easier to define and understand the term social welfare organization. We may define social welfare organization in very simple terms as civic organization operated exclusively for the promotion of social welfare. In a specific term, social welfare organization refer to organizations established by group of individuals with a specific purpose and held together by models of procedure and behavior and engaged in formulating and implementing programs, benefits and services for meeting social needs recognized as basic for the welfare of the people. Emergence of social welfare organization in India. A sizable number of social welfare organizations came into existence in India in the 18th century. Some of these social welfare organizations were distinctly social. These social welfare organizations were established in the cities of Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. Some important social welfare organizations established were Brahma Samaj, Arya Samaj, Ramakrishna Mission, etc. The motivation for the establishment of religiously anchored social welfare organization were change so as to cater to the specific needs and aspirations of particular group. The noteworthy social welfare organizations were in this context was the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, an organization of Hindus who envisaged a Hindu Raj in India. Similarly, religion-based organization exists for the Muslims, Christians, etc., particularly in those areas where the group are numerically significant. Some of these organizations operated by groups and articulating communal interest while others were geared to uplift and reform of the respective communities. The social welfare organization include youth clubs, women clubs, cooperatives, credit organizations. These clubs, although our social organizations are introduced in the community by outside agencies, usually by the government as organizational innovations. Since most of these organizations are initiated 
and financed by the government, they are not equipped to act as pressure group so as to influence the governmental policies or to act as countervailing powers to the local authority. In fact, these organizations facilitate the extension of state authority and influence. It is also important to note that these clubs are not intended to function as expressive group and inventory of the objectives of the clubs so that they are mostly instrumental in character and they try to accelerate the process of economic development and social change already set in motion by India's five-year plans. Social welfare organizations, programs and services. In the past, social welfare programs and services were hardly extended beyond protective and to some extent curative programs and services. But the present focus is on preventive and rehabilitative programs and services. Now, the social welfare programs and services include promotional curative remedial and rehabilitative programs and services for the physically and the mentally handicapped persons, programs and services for certain selected section of the society and offered a large scale with the intention of changing social relations. For example, programs and services for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, women, etc. Programs and services for other vulnerable groups such as children, slum dwellers, etc. Specific programs and services for individuals and groups to solve their problems of adjustment or socio-economic inadequacies. Programs and services under social defense. Programs and services related with relief and rehabilitation in emergency situations. Programs and services for groups for specific purposes, for example, educational services for the dropouts. Programs and services of recreation for the different age groups and measures for social security and insurance. The scope and content of social welfare programs and services at any point of time is decided by the social issues which some of the forefront and on social tasks to be undertaken. Features of programs and services of social welfare organization. All social welfare programs and services of social welfare organizations are tentative. Secondly, programs and services grow in a sporadic manner because it arises from the changing needs and conditions. For example, the programs dealing with destitution and beggary would become out of place when primary poverty is eliminated and when beggars hardly exist as a result of the provisions of the comprehensive social security schemes. Similarly, the welfare programs for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes may even, though they are important today, cease to have relevance soon after these castes and tribes reach a level of development more or less on par with the bulk of the people in an area. There may, however, be some persistent needs and some groups of people whose problems continue to demand attention. For example, the needs of the handicapped remain always a subject matter of social welfare because the physically or mentally handicapped persons exist everywhere in small or large numbers. Similarly, the welfare of children always revives the attention and receives the sympathy of social welfare administrators because they constitute a dependent and vulnerable group. The areas in which programs and activities which can be taken up by social welfare organizations are child welfare, women welfare, youth welfare, family welfare, welfare of the aged, welfare of handicapped. In the above mentioned area, programs and activities which can be taken up by social welfare organizations are home for destitute and orphan children, 
home for non-affected children of deceased parents, counseling and guidance bureau, daycare centers, creches, founding homes, Bal Vikas Kendra, financial assistance to destitute children, integrated child development project, special nutrition program, family and social welfare projects, services for the children in need of care and protection, recreational center, balwaris, maternal and child care, stipends, scholarship for students, hostels for working women, home for destitute women and widows. Social welfare organization presupposes the perception of need by the community or a section of the community. Secondly, its assessment that the need can be met and thirdly, its readiness to regard its duty to mobilize itself to meet the need. It is an indication therefore of its continuing awareness of the changing needs of the community and of the desire to retain the principle of creativity in social life. For the healthy functioning of democracy, social welfare organization of this nature are of the highest significance. It serves as a training ground for the potential leadership of the community and helps to continually broaden the concept of social justice. Social welfare organizations also help in focusing the attention of the members of the community on its problems and needs. It promotes the acceptance by individual citizens of their social and civic responsibilities and it gives them an opportunity to learn to work cooperatively but more important than all this is the fact that voluntary action keeps alive this spirit of voluntariness of working without being compelled or required. A democratic way of life is not ensured by merely providing a democratic political structure. It lives in a multiplicity of small groups thinking and intelligently cooperating in the solution of community's problem. This can happen only by fostering a spirit of voluntariness among the members of a community. Another important aspect of voluntary organization is the relative degree to which it can remain independent of the particular political trends. The agencies of government are likely to receive sudden support or to lapse into inactivity depending upon the shifts in the parties in power. Social welfare organization is also found to more flexible and free from bureaucratic rigidity. The officers of social welfare organizations do not have to work in an atmosphere where people are afraid of sowing the initiative for fear of breaking the letter of the law. Large bureaucrats tend to frame regulation which are more designed to keep people from doing wrong than to help them to do the right. A tradition develops by which individuals tend to do minimum for the fear that their actions might transgress the scope of work to which they are limited. Social welfare organization has also the advantage of ensuring public cooperation. Voluntary agencies are born because of the general acceptance of particular need, hence there is the requisite atmosphere for the eliciting of general cooperation. Governmental agencies which came into existence as a result of statutory provisions may often fail in winning the cooperation because of the lack of awareness and appreciation of the urgency on the part of the community as a whole. Pioneering has been a major function of the voluntary agencies. It is one of the points of strength of voluntary actions that it allows experimentation. One aspect of this strength is the freedom of voluntary action to initiate work in controversial areas. A small group of people convinced about the need for the particular activity can come together and initiate work even if the rest of the community is indifferent, apathetic or hostile. This freedom to pioneer 
an experiment is probably the first and the most important aspect of the strength of the voluntary action. Social welfare organizations have also the advantage that because of the greater proportion of the services that they rendered by volunteers, their operational costs are kept at a minimum. This last is an advantage that is likely to be abused. It might lead people to expect that voluntary agencies should do without any paid or professional personnel altogether. There is a need in the area for the clear understanding of the respective contribution of volunteers and salaried workers. Social welfare organization is born of the desire of a group, large or small, to help meet an urgent need. This action may be in the nature of the self-help or the help given by relatively well-placed individuals to those who are deprived. In its absence, the emergence of voluntary action in relation to a particular need will depend entirely upon whether the need is perceived, whether those who perceive it feels motivated to act in relation to it, and whether they have the necessary resources to act. Out of these very conditions are born some of the limitations of the voluntary actions, limitations of social welfare organization. Probably, the most common limitations of social welfare organization is the limited resources they have at their disposal. It is often found that this compels the social welfare organizations to work on too small a scale. Very often, the agencies that are established have no adequate resources to meet the needs of the even the local area in that particular field. It would be worth considering whether and how far our voluntary agencies are in a position to meet this demand made upon them. The sporadic character of social welfare organization often leads to its instability. Organizations are founded without a certain creativity or even a plan regarding where their resources are going to be drawn from and even if the organizations continue to exist. It functions ill-equipped, understaffed, and inefficiently. It is necessary here to say that all voluntary organizations do not necessarily suffer from these ills. There are indeed national and international organizations whose offices are better staffed than probably those of some of the voluntary organizations, but the observations made above probably hold true about a large number of social welfare organizations in our country and other countries in Asia. Summary. Let us sum up. The term social welfare organization is defined as a civic organizations operated exclusively for the promotion of social welfare. In a specific term, social welfare organization referred to organizations established by a group of individuals with specific purposes and held together by models of procedure and behavior and engaged in formulating and implementing programs, benefits and services for meeting the social needs recognized as basic for the welfare of the people.